month. Today's video is going to be a little bit different uh, because A, I'm not talking about a creepy topic or subject matter and B, it's not scripted so please bear with me. Um, today I'm going to be talking about this book by Donald Miller, Building a Story Brand, Clarify Your Message So Customers Will Listen. It's an excellent read. I definitely recommend reading it. I actually liked it more than Breakthrough Advertising, if you're familiar with that book. Um, and he wrote it for business owners, people who would like to be business owners, or people in sales, marketing, and advertising. His whole spiel is basically that he's encouraging these individuals to make use of the storytelling framework within their marketing material to clarify their message. He talks about the reality that many businesses fail. Business owners often invest in making their uh, marketing look pretty, but pretty websites do not sell things. Words sell things. So if you haven't clarified your message, your customers are only hearing noise and it's costing you sales. He talks about how he's been able to help companies uh, double, triple, and quadruple their revenue all over the world. Why? Because the storytelling framework is a sense-making mechanism that draws the brain away from confusion toward clarity. So he's basically saying uh, that you should use the storytelling framework within your messaging because that's how you get people to pay attention to you, to what you have to say. Just think about it, when you're watching your favorite Netflix show and it's so hard not to watch the next episode when you're so immersed in the story. The first principle is called the character and it basically means that you need to position the customer as the hero of your story, not your brand or your business. That means you shouldn't be talking about yourself too much. Um, you know, nobody cares about the long backstory, how your granddaddy started the business and passed down the torch to you. Like people just don't care. Uh, as wonderful as the story may be, they just don't care. So by positioning the customer as the hero, um, you're able to exactly define what it is that the customer wants and then use that exact verbiage in all of your marketing material. So that should be at the top of your website, the headline, in the most simplest terms, defining what is it that they want, right? You want to hook people in to your story. So that should be the first thing. And the second thing, the desire should be, or the benefit should be really simple and it should be directly connected to their survival, okay? And in so doing, you're basically opening up the story gap and you're inviting your customers into your story. The second principle he talks about is called has a problem. So the first one was a character, now we have has a problem. And in this section, he basically talks about the importance of talking about the problems that your customers are currently facing. So the more you talk about the problems that they're currently having, the more interest you will gain. Just think about it. When you are reading a book or watching a movie, that's just about a guy who has woken up, you know, he's doing his morning routine, he's having a coffee, he's brushing his teeth and goes to work. That story is boring. It didn't captivate you because nothing happens. There's no issue. There's no problem. So you need to talk about the problem so that they're going, oh yeah, I am having this issue. Oh yes, I can identify with that, right? So the more you talk about the problem, the more desire they will have. And the more you vilify and personify this issue, uh, the more they will be able to relate to it and you will be able to position your product or service um, as a tool or a weapon um, that helps you know, solve this issue or defeat the villain, right? So then he goes on to talk about the three levels of problems that your customers are facing. So there's the external problem, internal problem, and philosophical problem. So external is the very obvious thing that they're lacking. So the physical product that uh, you provide or service that you provide. So let's say you own a clothing store, it's the actual clothes that they don't have. Um, however, limiting yourself in talking only about the external problem they're having uh, does a large disservice to you because people generally buy products or services to resolve an internal issue, right? How it makes them feel. Think about it. You buy products, you buy you know, certain clothes, you buy makeup because they make you feel a certain way. So uh, you need to talk about um, how your customer is currently 
uh, feeling without having your product when they don't have your product okay so the external and internal problems you need to be discussing there's also the philosophical problems that they're having and this has to do with the larger picture of things so people like to be a uh, part of something that's bigger than themselves so tesla did this in their branding right um whenever somebody buys their car they are buying a product that they know will essentially help sell save the environment or the company toms the shoe company um whenever somebody buys their product they are aware that a part of their proceeds are going to a good cause so uh doing something like that that's the larger philosophical problem um it doesn't have to be so huge as Tesla or Tom has done it, obviously. Uh, Nespresso did that with their sort of gourmet coffee machines. They are basically branding that whoever buys their product, they're solving that issue of uh, not having gourmet coffee at home, right? So you're part of that movement. I'm able to make gourmet coffee at home. So the second principle is really about be discussing the problems that your customers are currently facing at all three levels the external internal and the philosophical the third principle is called and meets a guide so we have a character who has a problem and meets a guide and this basically talks about how you need to position yourself as the guide and not the hero remember your customer is not looking for another hero you're looking for a guide who's going to take them to their end goal right so just think about it in movies uh it's not the hero who is the most knowledgeable person at the beginning of the movie it's the guide who helps them get to the final goal right so that's what your customer is looking for and you need to position yourself as the guide and you do that by expressing empathy and authority you express empathy by making empathetic statements right um this is this can be done really simply in a simple way so let's say you're a fitness trainer by saying that like look i understand how difficult it is to lose the last 15 pounds of your weight loss journey by just saying that it makes people feel like okay this person understands me um, i can trust them therefore i'm more likely to do business with them right so by making those empathetic statements people feel like they can trust us and they can work with us now, authority you express by having testimonials, obviously, um, you know, including statistics. Um, is there a certain amount of customers that you've helped, a certain amount of hours that you've worked on whatever, a certain project or whatever that may be, you know, including logos of people or companies that you've worked with? Um, and, uh, and are there any awards that you've received? So by incorporating those things, you are positioning yourself as the guide and not the hero. So the fourth principle is called who gives them a plan. So we have a character who has a problem, who meets a guide and who gives them a plan. And this plan is really there to alleviate any confusion that your customer may have. This plan can take the form of a pre-purchase plan, a post-purchase plan, or a combination of the two. So it can look um, something like simply click the buy button, download the file, and enjoy the benefits of having an awesome um, workout at the comfort of your home. So, and he says to make sure that you limit the the steps within the plan itself so you really want to have only three max four steps there because anything more than that just generates confusion uh, so really keep it simple to the point um, and the last point the third or fourth point should be somewhat of a reflection of the future what will their future look like once they buy the product so the fourth point is to create a plan that will sort of alleviate any confusion that they may have in terms of what it takes to buy your product. Okay, so the fifth principle is called and calls them to action. So we have a character who has a problem, who meets a guide, who gives them a plan and calls them to action. So even in movies, the hero doesn't take action uh, themselves. They need to be challenged by an outside force. So in the same way, you need to challenge the customer to place an order, make a purchase, make a sale. Um, you need to challenge them to do it, otherwise they won't. Um, and he says that you need to be super clear and assertive 
in your messaging when you do so um, because otherwise if you just do these like sort of soft calls to action that just communicates a lack of belief in your own product so you need to be assertive repeat it over and over and over and over again um, and yeah just be assertive in your calls to action he also goes on to talk about the way that we perceive information so when we're scanning a website we do so in a z pattern right that's how our eyes scan it so it goes from the left corner to the right corner then diagonally down and then to the right corner again so he suggests that by placing the um the buy now button schedule whatever call to action button uh on on the top right corner then again in the middle in the center under your header pretty much and then perhaps again uh down at the bottom right corner and that by doing that you're basically uh making sure that your customers will see that button and you also want to make it super noticeable and evident so it stands out um on your website i definitely recommend checking out this section uh, for yourself. He also goes on to talk about transitional calls to actions, what those uh, look like and whatnot. But yeah, uh, challenging your customers to take action is super important and being assertive in your communication. The sixth principle is called that helps them avoid failure. He explains that brands that don't warn their customers about what could happen if they don't buy their product or service, they essentially fail to answer the so what question that everybody's asking. What do I have to lose if I don't buy your product, right? Uh, so he suggests including several bullet points that basically communicate what your uh, what the customer has to lose if they don't do business with you, if they don't buy your product. What negative consequences are you helping them avoid? Uh, are you helping them avoid a loss of money, um, opportunity cost, um, resources, time? Uh, think about the negative consequences and include that in your messaging. And the last principle is called ends in success. And here he basically talks about how we shouldn't assume that our customers know what their lives will look like after they've bought our product. That we shouldn't assume that they know what the transformation will look like. We have to tell them. So basically you want to tell your customers exactly where your product or service can take them, what their daily lives will look like, what they will feel like. Otherwise they will not have any motivation to buy into your product or service, right? So you have to spell out what this transformation will look like. What, what are they currently feeling? What are they currently doing right now? to where you can take them. How are they going to feel? What are their daily lives going to look like? So for instance, let me take you from the stress and anxiety and worry you're feeling over your content being ignored to feeling confident knowing that your customers will now listen. So basically you have to spell out what this transformation will look like and that is going to motivate your customers to buy into your product or service. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed reading this book. It was a great read. I also recommend his second book called Marketing Made Simple. Uh, he gets into sales funnels and things like that. So I definitely recommend that one as well. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you thought, if you found this helpful. Uh, I hope you have a great day.